Hey there, welcome back to Reddit Dating, the best channel for Reddit cheating stories. Be sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification for more stories like these. Now, let's get into the video. My STBXW filed for a divorce 8 months ago. We have been separated for 8 months and moved in with her affair partner. Divorced is to be finalized next month. Now, she's begging not to go through with it and begging me to try reconciliation. My wife, 38 years old, and I, 37 years old, met when we were both students at the same institution of higher learning. We had been dating for five years before we decided to tie the knot. Our marriage has been rather stable, with just a few ups and downs along the road. We have two children. We have two children, ages 13 and 15, who live at home with us. During the first week of January of last year, I became aware that my wife was spending far more time on the phone than she was accustomed to. The majority of what she did was the same as that of every other cheater. The people who worked with me lied to me, shifted responsibility, and gaslighted me when I expressed my concerns. I was embarrassed in front of everyone. The fact that I wasn't perfect and made mistakes that I deeply regret is well known to me. But during her affair with another guy, she treated me as if I were a piece of her that she couldn't live without. I attempted to address all of the parts of our relationship that she thought were lacking in an effort to make things better. When D-Day arrived in early June, she admitted to having an EA and to having only had two sexual encounters with him in the previous calendar year. After that, she accused me of being the spark for her connection with another guy, which I strongly denied. As soon as she expressed a wish for reconciliation, we began attempting to reconcile with her, but she was just not interested. They were able to keep in touch because she did. As soon as I expressed my displeasure, she argued that they were just friends and continued to delete communications, despite my repeated requests that she refrain from deleting them. As soon as she learned that I was contemplating divorce, she broke down and begged me not to go forward with the process. Her fury at my bringing up the affair led to my having to apologize to her for my behavior, which I ultimately did. In the next two or three months, she began to depart without a trace, claiming that she was visiting relatives who need her aid at the time. She was never seen again. After a time, I had a sneaking suspicion that she was going to see AP, and when I brought it up to her, she was quite persuasive. She was gone for the weekend and didn't return any of my phone calls or texts after that. When she returned, she informed me that her cousin had fallen ill and that they needed to send her to the hospital. She also informed me that she had left her phone at her sister's house while they were driving the cousin to the hospital. In addition, I was putting out my best effort to make things work for us throughout the whole process. She was keeping an eye on everything I was doing, but she couldn't have given a damn. I couldn't believe it when she informed me she would be departing in the middle of December. She said that she was dissatisfied with our relationship and that she still cherished me, but that she had fallen in love with another guy. She had finally met the person she had been looking for for a long time. I recall sobbing for hours in an effort to persuade her, but she was adamant in her beliefs and refused to listen. It was imperative that the children be informed. Because of the restricted room in her AP apartment, I was instructed to leave the children with me during the week and bring them back to her on Saturday and Sunday evening. She filed for divorce less than a week after the occurrence. Those previous several weeks have been the most difficult in my life, and I've been crying nonstop for many weeks. Despite my best attempts, she just expressed guilt for what she had put me through and said that she would want to apologize, but that her mind had already been made up about what she wanted to do. Everyone else, with the exception of us, was completely unaware of what was going on. The fact that we had simply been separated was known to both of them, but they were completely unaware of the reason for our separation. She and her father were already invited to my home when her mother phoned me at the end of January to urge that I speak the truth. I cried nearly to the point of tears on my mother and shoulder laws as I informed her and my sister-in-law what I had learned. They expressed sorry for their daughter's reckless behavior and gave me solace. When I got home, I called my parents and a few close friends, and before long, everyone was aware of our presence, and I began getting consoling messages from others who were talking about my ex-boyfriend. I received a phone call from my wife, who broke down in tears and told me that I had turned everyone against her and that she despises me. This happened a few days later. Apart from that, she alleges that she and AP have been threatened by unknown individuals, that her father despises her despite the fact that they previously had a good relationship, and that her sisters had refused to engage in discussion with her. Without insulting her, no one will engage in meaningful discussion with her, 
At the moment, it was the middle of April in the year. She had a worsened relationship with AP by the beginning of June, which she attributed to the stress she was facing at work. While seeing the children, she told me that her assistant principal had booted her out because he couldn't manage the stress of their relationship. At the time of this chat, she was a guest in a hotel room. She did not have the expression of someone who was sad on her face. When she questioned as to whether or not she could move back in, I told her that she could not do so. She expressed her gratitude, but requested that more time be spent with the children in order to show her appreciation. In addition to expressing her remorse for missing the children's activities, she said that she would return in the afternoon to cook for them and spend time with them. I couldn't help but agree. I could count on her to be there as soon as I got home from work to prepare my favorite dinner, clean the house, and leave tiny messages with flowers to say I love you. After work, she would always make an effort to spend more time with me when I returned home from work. It was a delight, I must say, to spend time with her and talk with her. Following that, she expressed her feelings about how much she misses me and whether or not I really wanted to be separated from my spouse. Conversations like these were the kinds of things I tried to avoid at all costs. She called me last week to express her dissatisfaction with IC and inquired as to whether we may use MC instead of IC in the future. Since starting to dress like that and apply makeup, she sought to establish contact with me, but I've turned her down each time he's attempted to begin contact with me. She has gone out and purchased more items for me, and she has made reference to MC on a number of times. She cried uncontrollably throughout the weekend, begging with me not to forward with the divorce proceedings. She said that she had already been through a lot and that all she wanted was for me and her family to be reunited and that she would do everything I asked of her. In this case, it's almost as if the roles have been switched from the norm. However, despite the fact that I've been feeling numb the whole time, a part of me is relieved that she has been given a taste of her own medicine. In spite of the fact that I still have feelings for her, I'm not sure whether or not I should attempt to rekindle our relationship. Story 2 My wife female 28 cheated on me. Our relationship dates back to when she was a freshman in college, so we have three years of marriage under our belts with my wife Kirsten, a 28-year-old lady. We brought our first kid into the world two years ago, and our relationship has been on the verge of falling apart ever since. In order to care for our family, I work around 60 hours per week, while she is a stay-at-home mother who also sometimes takes on yoga teaching engagements to boost our household income. Then she met a photographer in her yoga class, and everything changed for her around six months after giving birth. From that point on, everything changed for her. According to Jane, the photographer, Kirsten was pushed to pose for a boudoir image in order to boost her self-esteem and confidence. I had no objections to this since I wanted to be of aid to her because she was still suffering from postpartum depression at the time of our chat, which I understood. For the first time in a long time, she seemed to be feeling true delight as a result of the picture session. A few months later, she claims she received an invitation from Jane to participate in a yoga highlight video shoot, and she even received a complimentary airline ticket and hotel reservation to the location where the video was being filmed. Even though I was disappointed that I was unable to accompany her on her trip, I was happy that she was able to spend some time away from me and our kid. The next day, she returned to the hotel, revived, and shouted about how much she had enjoyed herself. Jane eventually offered a slew of examples, all of which were great, nevertheless, some of them had nudity that was just indicated rather than shown. This is the moment at when things began to go bad, as you can see. I decided to look into Jamie's photography firm because I was curious. It turned out that Jane was a male photographer, just as I had thought. I'm not sure why, but despite the fact that I've never met her, I've always believed Jane was a woman. I'm not sure why. It seemed to me that something didn't seem quite right especially considering the fact that Kirsten had never addressed it, so I decided to investigate more. In the aftermath, I still have nightmares about what occurred next. Jane, in addition to being a photographer, also had an account on a fetish website, which was brilliantly disguised and could only be discovered by delving further down the rabbit hole. Seeing Kirsten's photos on his picture stream made my heart sink when I went to his profile and found them. Her face, on the other hand, was concealed so I couldn't see her. After seeing her outfit from not just the most recent picture shoot, but also from a boudoir session she had earlier in the year, as well as a tattoo she had on her lower back, my suspicions were verified. Every activity, including oral performance and reception, as well as penetration, was captured on film and 
preserved for future reference. A strong one to vomit sprang in me, that I used to be sporty, but that I've gained weight as a result of working 60 hours a week is especially upsetting to me. Jess is a muscled, intriguing personality with a member twice my size, and I realize that's exactly what Kirsten is seeking for instead of the same old boring me. Although it happened more than a year ago, I haven't brought up the subject with her at this point. Breaking up with my spouse is something I'm frightened of doing for the sake of our child. That leaves me with the understanding that when she is in class or while I'm at work, she may be practicing yoga or jane or something like that.